What is happening budget builders and welcome back to the channel. On today's video we get this hand-built Nash Metropolitan running for the first time in 36 years. How's it going? I'm Michael and this is Budget Builds. My dad and I bring rusty crusty old cars back to life. I'm not sure y'all will remember, but about a year ago we did a video on this car, and I gotta be honest, originally I thought the car was fiberglass, just how wacky and crazy it is, but this car is almost completely steel. Somebody had a lot of time putting this thing together. There's a little filler in spots, most of it's lead. Gives you an idea of how long ago this was done, but it is such a wacky, different, ugly, goofy, odd little car and that's what we love about it. Now we actually bought this car almost three years ago. We bought it right at the same time that we bought our 1966 F350. Projects get in the way, other stuff happens, and stuff like this gets put on the back burner. It's not only cool to work on this thing after sitting since 1985, but be able to get it going after having it ourselves for almost three years now. So now originally we did have that 1800 that we pulled out of that MGB that was actually getting built to be put in this car. While we were in the process of getting that thing torn apart and everything, an actual 1500 high output, the original motor to this, obviously the original original was completely shot, but one just like the original was actually pulled out of a car in the mid 80s, popped up on Marketplace for 200 bucks and we went and snatched it up. It was only a couple hours away in Irma, South Carolina. Brought it back here, up here to the upstate Let's go ahead and check that thing out. Let's get it cleaned up, freshened up, and get stuck in this car. Let's find out if this thing will run and drive. All right, well there it is. Now it's time to start dressing this up. We've got new points and condenser, rotor, cap, wires, plugs. We do have an oil filter upgrade kit, which changes it to, I'm not exactly sure what filter it was. Again, I'll have to look, but it gets rid of this cartridge filter and just makes it a spin on. These are kind of a pain because they're right up against the frame rail. And so it gives you a shallower, easier to get a hold of filter instead of having to order these cartridge filters. Pull this off, clean it up, do something with this valve cover. And we've got a few other little bits here. Got a carb kit that we're going to put in it and a fuel pump rebuild kit that we need to put on it. New motor mounts and we will run this thermostat list to begin with. I want to run a flush to make sure we get everything kicked through. Wasn't terrible in there but it did have a little bit of crusties and so we want to get it all flushed through before we put a thermostat in there. But yeah, everything looks pretty good. We may go ahead and throw a, pit, a little coat of something on the manifold and like I said, we'll do something with that valve cover and we'll get it ready and we'll go ahead and stick this thing in the car. Very nice. All right, well, it's just about time to be able to slap that motor in there. You're not really gonna be able to see it, 
The master cylinders for both the clutch and the brakes are up underneath the car. Kind of a pain to get to, but I'm going to get up under here, get those pulled out so we can get the new ones put in. Here's how you get to your reservoirs. You can see those crusty old master cylinders. Oh. <sighs> up under here. Let's get them pulled out. All right. So we got the crispy critters off, and those haven't been used in a long time. <laughs> They're kind of rough. And so we have our two different sizes. Obviously, you've got a 5 eighths and a 3 quarter. Now, this rod is correct, although it's for the break, so for the 3 quarter. So we need to swap this to this one, and then this one's completely wrong, so we need to put our clutch rod on the 5 eighths bore master cylinder. So we'll do, we'll do the swapping around, get those stuck back in there, and we can start working on the brakes and the master and we'll get ready to slap that motor in all right here we go got them all together all you have to do is pull your little c-clip out of there obviously it needs to be the same size bore for it to fit in there like it's supposed to and uh, we've got them in there and everything looks good so we should be ready to ride all right got those master cylinders in time to jump into each of these wheels get new pads and wheel cylinders and hoses put on it's kind of funny you can see this thing was lowered at one point of time with some hose clamps that's the way to do it <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and get these knocked out really quick and we'll be able to stop the car when we roll it around to pick it up to put the motor in it come on back Pretty clean motor and a dirty little car. So this is one thing I have been wanting to do with this car. I know this carpet is absolutely gorgeous. It's just not quite right for me. So we're gonna get it pulled, tonight. pulled it out of here. Let's see how bad these floors are. Not bad. Wow, that's pretty carpet. I don't know why we don't just leave it in here. Oh, that is awful. <coughs> Wear a mask. So these are all just where the original seat mounts were. So they have different little patches there. That's solid though. You get a little bit of patchwork right here. This again is just where all the original holes were. That's a solid floor. I think we just clean it up nice. We might fix those couple spots and uh, let's pour 15 this entire floor or, or put some kind of a rust sealer inhibitor in there. And I think it'll be good to go get some fresh carpet in this thing. Yeah. All right, so we went ahead and drained the fuel. Yuck, I didn't see a bunch of rust chips or anything come out of there. So our tank may be pretty usable. That'll be nice. All right, so being that we got this car almost three years ago now and I stuck the key somewhere and I have no idea where I put it. So obviously with this car, it's just an on-off switch. Originally it had a on-off and headlight switch right here. Somebody's put a headlight switch here and just an on-off little switch. And then obviously there's your starter, kind of goofy. But we went ahead and just grabbed another switch, which is just a actually a starting switch but we'll just use the off and accessory which will give us what we need so let's go ahead and disconnect here and get this one thrown in
and there you have it. Now, thankfully, even though the wiring has that goofy sheathing stuff on it, it's actually in pretty good shape underneath. It is actually just rubber wiring with that goofy stuff on it. Not sure why they did that, but thankfully it's all in pretty good shape on this car, so I don't think we're gonna have an issue there, but now we have an ignition switch and we're one step closer to firing this thing off. All right, so obviously this car, being the age it is and British built, for some reason it's positive earth, which is kind of goofy, and we're gonna fix that. You can actually just swap it over. Thankfully, our battery cable here is in pretty good shape. We're gonna cut that, put a new ter positive terminal on it. We'll go ahead and remove what was the positive and put a nice ground wire, and then that'll be good to go. The only thing that there's a certain style radio that won't work, and you have to flip your coil wires to the opposite direction, uh, and then, we went with an alternator, which has a self-charging and everything. You would have to jump out wherever it is. You actually have to jump out the regulator and reverse the polarity in that. But with what we're doing, because we have an alternator, all we have to do is switch those two wires and the wires at the back, and boom, we have a positive whatever system. <laughs> the way it should be. All right, so there you go. Got a ground hooked up. We ended up just using that original wire. Turn our key on. What is that? Oh, we got turn signals working. Check and see. Which one's working? Got a driver's side. What the? Well, we got a passenger side. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So we. This car will confuse people in more ways than one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've made a part store run for what I think to be the last few things that we actually need to button up this car and get ready to run it for the first time. So with this car, we have the dummy lights and everything. I would like gauges and all on this so we can really see what we have going on. So we went ahead and picked up this little gauge set. This just is mini pods with the little gauges so it'll tuck up nicely under the dash. We'll be able to see all of our critical things that we need to know on that engine. We've got new hoses for the radiator there. New V-belt. And then just some filters and fuel line and vacuum line for the advance on the distributor. Let's go ahead and get the stuff thrown on and let's attempt to fire this thing up. With getting our gauge set mounted in here, we don't have a ton of options as far as room. I don't want it up under here because I don't want it in the way of you know, this is going to be, your legs probably going to be pretty high in this car just because it is a short car and you have those pedals, how they drop down, and we don't want it in our knee space. So I think the best bet is actually going to be ha to have it over here in the passenger compartment, but angled in such a way where you can still see it nicely from over here, and then we can hook our power up from our key switch to the gauges. Good glove box. go not too shabby nice view of them you can see them from the driver's seat and it's not too too over the top thankfully our spot there where we had the pressure actuator there for the dummy light we actually have it was the same exact size as this so we were able to just run our little adapter in there we can take our hose put the fitting on oh put this on it then put the fitting on it and we can run it down in here and get it snugged up. Now for the time being, I'm just gonna stick this through a random hole over here. And when we get every... <laughs> 
when we get everything buttoned up, we'll get this routed exactly how we want it, cut it to length and everything. But for the time being, we just want to be sure we have good oil pressure because this will be the first time we've run this little engine. And it's that for a long time. And so <laughs> what's funny is, is this car's been off the road since 85. This motor, I think it actually been, it had been longer since this had ran than actually that, but it was pulled out of a car, stored away, and has been kept nice and dry. So we should be okay, but we want to be safe. All right, so I did go ahead, slide our radiator back in, bolt it on, stuck our hoses, and we do have our new belt now. So we'll go ahead and get this on here. This was a little fun to figure out. I think I got three or four belts before we found the right one. And the biggest reason is, like I said, going from generator to alternator. And they don't even have Nash Metropolitan in the system. Crazy. All right, belts on, coolant's going in. Well, water for now. We're gonna run it through a few times, let it flush. We do have our little vacuum line just temporarily run here for the vacuum advance. Everything's hooked up. We have fuel ran from there to the fuel pump. Let's go ahead and start turning this thing over, check oil pressure, and see if it starts pulling fuel. We're gonna do this without the key to begin with. Awesome. Good, strong oil pressure. Already pumping up through. Very nice. That's exactly what we want to see. Uh, no fuel. I did pressurize it a little bit with our bulb. And even so, that fuel pump is not doing anything. It's not leaking or anything. Everything looks good. We've got some weepage, but we don't have pressure. That was a pain in the badonky donk to rebuild. It took me forever. Nothing quite was, everything seemed okay, but it just, it was really, really hard. So obviously something didn't go back together right or was incorrect. Ah. All right, well, we've got our electric fuel pump installed. This car has been off the road, non-running since 1985. We've owned it for almost three years, and this is the first time. We're gonna see if this thing runs. <laughs> this car's been put on the back burner for so long. It's such a cool, wacky, different car. We ran out of our way to save this thing before we actually started YouTube, and it's just been, it's been something that's been put off for so long. Parts are hard to find for these, and we finally pieced everything together. I'm so excited for this. You guys ready? We'll pull our choke out. Let me give it just a little bit of fuel. Key on. Pump the throttle a couple times. Ooh. Come on, baby. What an awesome sound. It sounds great. Killer oil pressure. Oh my goodness. Let's get this valve cover stuck back on because we are slinging oil everywhere.
that is exciting. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the smile on my face. It's, it's one thing when we go out and save these cars, when we've saved one and it's got put on the back burner, it's been to the side. It's not like the 911 where we've been working on it steadily, keeping it going. This was something that sadly got put on the back burner because of life and other things. But it's coming back to life. It is running for the first time in 36 years. So I'm not sure if you could tell, although this is the end, it was blowing fuel out. So that means this is backwards. It's working, it's just backwards. Not sure how it ended up that way. I took it apart, took pictures, put it back together exactly how I thought it should. But it didn't go back together correctly, obviously, but it's working. So I might just flip these lines and it'll be right. For the time being, it is working like this, and that's what we need. It'll be good enough for us to take it on its first drive. Now, we can't go crazy. Obviously, I need to get a coolant temperature gauge in there so we make sure our temp and everything looks good. And I also, we are straight manifold. I had exhaust for this, but it's not quite right, so we're probably just going to order a full exhaust because they're pretty reasonably inexpensive for this car. We might do some modifications, kind of customize it a little bit, but at least from the manifold back, we'll have that original exhaust for this thing so it doesn't leak and it does well underneath this car. All right, so with the car down here on the driveway, one thing that I want to go ahead and do that we've been wanting to do is wash this thing because it has 36 years of barn filth. What's a shame is you can tell this thing had been repainted at some point of time with this kind of eh, weird green and it was, all, it was originally, when it was first built, I do believe this was actually a show car at one point of time, was this really, really cool, pretty candy apple green. And they went with that darker green at some point of time. So we may have to bring this thing back to that original color. Let's go ahead and get this thing blasted off and give it its first wash. All right, let me set my seat down in here. <laughs> my seat cushion. All right, so obviously I'm sitting up in the air with this tire. <laughs> and that's how the seats, the Mustang and the Cougar seat that was actually in this thing sat. So we have some different seats that we're gonna be putting in this thing. But it runs, it seems to run pretty well at this point. We have brakes and we have a clutch. Let's see if this thing will drive. You ready? Oh. Let me hook the fuel pump up, it might run better.
strap or something on that gas tank. <laughs> oh my god, look at come here. Look at this shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, we might need to reconfigure that. All right, so we've got that original, the 500 steering wheel back in this thing, which gives us room to actually be able to shift it. Let's take it for a quick spin. that is going to wrap it up for this episode i do not know what somebody was thinking when they built this car back in the 60s when they did but it's awesome <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you saw the smiles or the smile on my face at least dad's gonna take it for a quick loop but this thing is awesome it is silly it is goofy but my goodness my jaws hurting from smiling because <laughs> it is absolutely hilarious what do you guys think? First drive since 1985, last registered in 85. That is 36 years. Obviously that engine was toast, but everything else there, other than going through the brakes and we put the clutch that was actually on this motor in there, it, it is running and driving for the first time in 36 years. Now it obviously needs some tires. We've got some ideas as far as wheels goes and stuff. We wanna do a little bit probably turn it more into a hot rod than whatever it is if you know what i mean <laughs> i guess it'll never be a hot rod it's it is super super cool though i really hope you all enjoyed this episode if you enjoyed this wacky different kind of stuff you'll notice we do a lot of that oddball stuff the saving it getting it running restorations and stuff like that be sure to the subscribe button notification bell thank you all so much as always for the positive love and support that we've had so far on this channel we're almost at that 100k mark and we could not be doing it without y'all that'll wrap it up peace out and catch y'all on the flip side no 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 i am this is his first time driving a three-speed on the column. <laughs> I have no clue. He's a muscle car guy. He doesn't drive something like this. Oh, I can't even do it on this tire. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Hey, give me some gas. Okay, hold on, just keep on going. My brakes are gonna stop give working. It a, give it a pedal. <laughs> Forgot to hook the fuel up. <laughs>